you know, I, I, I had the good fortune of seeing all of Pennsylvania up close during the campaign. And, and really it, it's like the, the harshest conditions, circumstances, you know, I, I, I are in, in a lot of these communities in Western Pennsylvania, you know, so, um, that's not to take away from the struggles in like Shemokin and right. those places in, in uh, but, but, uh, this region, uh, has been through a lot and, um, uh, was what propelled, you know, pushed Donald Trump over the top. I, I fully expect her to run for the Senate again in, in 2022. Uh, so, um, and, and the work here in, in Braddock is, is never going to be over. And, and, uh, I'm, I'm proud to, to, to be here. And, and it's, uh, I, I don't think there's any political strategist out there that says that, um, a small struggling Rust Belt town is a great platform to enter elected politics. But I think in this day and age, and under these circumstances, I, I, it's the way I'm going to do it. It's the way I'm, uh, I'm proud to say it. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, um, there's just so much at stake and, and, uh, you know, I'm going to run the race and be the kind of candidate that I would want to vote for. Somebody that was a champion for marriage equality, somebody that, you know, has a wife that, um, you know, was a, was a dreamer, um, somebody that, that champions a, a forgotten community like Braddock, uh, combined with, with somebody that also understands that, you know, you may not care about a steel mill in Claritin, but I do, and we, all want a better environment, but there has to be some trade-offs when it comes to shutting down facilities that are responsible for supporting a large part of the community that's left. So um, we we have to get away from the highly educated, urban, creative professionals, and we have to branch out and we have to embrace what I think is still should be the heart and soul of the, the Democratic Party.